I'm Associate Professor Laurie Murphy from James Cook University in Townsville, Australia. Uh, today I just want to spend a little bit of time talking to you about a research project that I was involved in with um, Professor Gianna Mascardo um, last year that looked at sustainability um, and whether or not initiatives in destination communities make a difference to tourists and their decision making. Um, this is an interesting topic because there's lots of um, literature in the area indicating that uh, environmental initiatives and sustainability is going to become much more important in the decision-making process of tourists. In fact, Williams and Ponford claim that um, as fewer environmentally quality and sound destinations exist globally, um, those that are incorporating environmental practices into their management systems are going to have a competitive advantage in the marketplace. Um, and so this focus on sustainability isn't only going to attract eco-tourists or green tourists, but also offer appeal to the mass tourism market as well. So that would tend to indicate that it's important to know whether sustainability initiatives undertaken by supply side operators and destinations actually will influence tourist demand for the destination, um, and more importantly, will it attract tourists who are interested in engaging in sustainable tourism experiences. Um, so. Uh, this research was really focused at looking at a particular location, a destination, which I'll explain in a moment, um, and trying to look at whether initiatives that, that destination has been undertaking to make it more sustainable um, matters or, in, or influences tourist decisions or perceptions of the place. So just a bit of background. Um, James Cook University is in Townsville, Australia, which is on the northeast coast off the Great Barrier Reef and just a 25 minute ferry ride from the city um, is a place called Magnetic Island. Um, it is a unique island destination uh, compared to the others along the Great Barrier Reef in the sense that not only does it um, attract tourists, but it is actually a suburb of Townsville. Um, nearly, um, the island has two thirds national parks, um, it has 25 kilometers of walking tracks um, and it uh, provides the opportunity for people to see koalas in the wildlife, for example. It's estimated that there's over 2,000 different um, koalas roaming on the island. Um, it is um, an island that has a mix of accommodation, self-contained backpacker hostels, uh, some hotels, but it's not a, a, a large-scale resort island destination. There's a range of activities available to tourists in terms of tours around the island, jet skiing, parasailing, fishing, etc. Um, the, the island itself, as we said, is a suburb of Townsville, and Townsville and the island were um, identified to get involved in sustainability initiatives, and one of those was the Townsville Solar City project. Um, and as part of that, um, Magnetic Island became a de designated solar suburb of Townsville, so a lot of work was done with the local energy supplier to put sustainable um, solar power on buildings and accommodation. And also 19 of the tourism operators went through a, pro a Queensland Sustainable Regions program uh, where they implemented some a range of sustainability initiatives as well. And Magnetic Island has been identified by Tourism Queensland um, in its range of strategies um, as uh, having the potential to um, develop as a sustainable tourism destination. So the Townsville um, Tourism Opportunity Plan identifies the region or the, the island as a sustainable region. Um, and this focus on sustainability has been identified as a major, major catalyst um, for developing that jewel in the crown for the local area. Uh, so this research was funded um, by Didi, which is a state government department, by the local ferry company, it was a main transport provider to and from the island, and the Townsville City Council. Uh, the funding was part of a Tourism Projects Pre-Feasibility Grant Scheme, which is a matching funds um, grant scheme, and the focus was on um, actually looking at the potential to develop sustainable tourism, tourism on the island and to identify um, some product and initiatives that might make a difference to tourists. So the methodology involved survey work of actual and potential visitors to the island. Um, and given the complexity of the local market, because 
some of the tourists or visitors to the island actually live in Townsville. Um, even though it is a suburb, it is still a day trip or overnight destination for locals, but also visitors that come to the region um, from outside of Townsville. So we developed uh, four surveys. One, which uh, was focused on tourists and, and Townsville locals who were surveyed on the island or on the way back on the ferry. So we know they have had or have just had an experience on the island. The other was for tourists who have visited this um, on this trip or um, who were contacted on the mainland, had already been to the island, and or locals who had visited within the past 12 months. Um, other, a third survey was tourists who were contacted on the mainland who said they were going to go to the island. And the fourth uh, were tourists who were coming to the region and not visiting and for locals who haven't visited in the, in the past 12 months. So we're trying to get both actual potential visitors as well as those that were non-visitors uh, to get a range of responses or feedback to these initiatives. And we also ran an online survey which allowed that streaming through those, those four options. So the surveying took place um, in September uh, 2011. Um, and as we mentioned, it took place on the island, on the ferries, at locations in Townsville where we would um, contact visitors um, and, and locals, as well as the online survey. So in terms of the profile of respondents, um, nearly half were residents of the region. Um, and the other half are visitors from either elsewhere in Australia or overseas. Um, so 36% of the visitors were from um, elsewhere in Australia and 36% were overseas. Uh, the average age of respondents was 37, with a range from 12 to 87, and 64% of respondents were females. So overall, um, the most important motives for this group of, of respondents to go on holiday were to go somewhere to relax, to spend time in natural environments, um, opportunities to see wildlife, um, availability, availability of accommodation which is environmentally and socially responsible, um, and outdoor adventure activities. So these were things that were important holiday decision-making factors to this group. We did ask them a series of questions um, about the sustainability initiatives on the island. So we explained about those 19 tourism operators and what they were doing. We told them it was a solar city um, destination. First, we asked them if they were aware of that. And 44% of visitors to the island were aware that it was a solar city, uh, and only 26% of non-visitors were. And then we asked them whether these things mattered. Um, so the overall appeal of those sustainability initiatives, 42% of respondents were supportive of those, thought they were a good idea, 30% were neutral. Um, we asked them once they were aware or if they were aware that it was a solar city, did that increase the, the likelihood of visiting Magnetic Island? And those uh, responses were kind of evenly distributed across, it didn't make a difference, neutral and being supportive or positive. Um, we asked them if they were interested in learning more about the sustainability initiatives on the island, and 37% said they were supportive or would, 35% were more neutral. But importantly, 66% of respondents thought that developing more sustainability initiatives was important. We also asked them how much more appealing the island would be if all the buses and rental cars were electric. 53% said that that would be more appealing. Um, would they be willing to pay $5 as a national park entry fee if that was invested back in park facilities and infrastructure. Again, 53% were supportive of that initiative. And um, if the island was carbon neutral, fully carbon neutral in terms of solar and um, transport um, power, etc., would the island be more appealing to them? And 44% said that, yes, they were supportive of those. They would, it would be more appealing. We then um, provided um, scenarios to the respondents. There was four different scenarios, but only a, any combination of two of them were on each survey. Um, and these scenarios were developed based on uh, things that had been prioritized or identified in previous planning documents for the destination. 
um, and or as part of initial stakeholder discussions about the future of the island. So we came up with four sustainable tourism product experiences that could be developed on the island and we asked respondents to indicate to us how appealing they were overall, whether or not that initiative would make them more likely to visit, um, whether it would encourage them to stay longer, and we actually in part, as part of the scenario had some price points attached to that um, and asked people whether or not they were would be willing to pay uh, that amount for that experience. Uh, so the first one was an environmentally friendly camping scenario where we showed them um, some eco tents, said it was a solar powered campsite um, and there was um, options in terms of a deluxe um, eco safari camp or self catering option with prices attached to that. Um, Overall, so this is one on scale one to five in terms of appeal or likelihood of visiting, etc. cetera. Um, overall, 29% said that they, it was likely or very, uh, appealing or very appealing. 21% said it was likely or very likely to make them more um, attractive to visit. Only 17% said it was likely or very likely to encourage them to stay longer. Um, but about 24% were willing to pay the deluxe option or the self-catering option. So there was some support for that initiative. The second one was the opportunity to um, purchase self-guided electric bike tour packages. So this included um, hire of the electric bike, self-guided um, map um, interpretation, a lunch at a cafe or a restaurant and an overnight accommodation. Um, because we were trying to offer packaged experiences that were commissionable so that the tourism industry could benefit from these. Uh, this one had more support, with 48% saying that it was appealing or very appealing overall, 39% saying it was more like made the island more attractive, 34% encouraged them to stay longer, but only 29% with willingness or more ability to pay the suggested price. Third option were um, guided indigenous cultural tours. And so this scenario um, focused on um, the local elders providing um, a guided tour um, around the island and explaining some of the indigenous culture and history. Um, again, this one had some moderate support. 48% said it uh, would be more made the island more appealing. 42% made it more attractive to visit. 32% said it would encourage them to stay longer, and 24% said they're they're willing to pay the suggested price. Uh, and finally. Uh, the notion of an alt art cultural precinct, which in, involved a guided safari, art safari to some of the local artists, um, as well as an interactive workshop. Um, this one had overall 28% saying that it made the destination more appealing, 39% indicated that they'd be more likely to visit because of it, 29% stay longer, 21% were willing to pay for the art safari, and 34% for the workshop. Okay, we then um, identified, based on um, the ratings on the initial questions about the um, appeal of the, uh, the range of initiatives and on these scenarios, um, people who were committed to sustainable tours. So these were those who scored highly on all the rating scales measuring appeal or attractiveness of sustainability initiatives. But most importantly, they were most likely to be willing to pay are able to pay for those sustainable options. So 16% of the respondents were identified as committed sustainable tourists. Another 32% were identified as passive sustainable tourists, those that were generally supportive of those initiatives but less willing to change your behavior and or to pay for those options. Um, so adding sustainability that doesn't cost them anything would increase the attractiveness of the destination for this bulk of tourists here. Then there was a neutral and different group, 21%. Uh, uh, who really were around the, th the three on the rating scale for all those options. And then there was a not sustainable tourist who had lower ratings in terms of support or appeal. So some of the um, results around the differences between those groups in terms of who they were. Um, those pr committed sustainable tourists were different from all the other three groups in general in the, in the sense that they are more likely to be female. Um, they were more likely to be from the local region. 50% um, were local, 36% were from other places in Australia, and 14% inter international. In terms of 
um, visits to the towns or region, the tourists um, in this group were the least likely to have been to the island previously, and they're most likely to um, also visit the Strand, Reef HQ, uh, go diving, um, were also in the region as well. They were, in terms of their current or recent trip, they were most likely to, to walk around the island rather than use other transport op opportunities. Um, they were least likely to be traveling with friends um, and least likely to have, have been regular visitors to the island. Um, and importantly, they were most satisfied with their magnetic island experience. So a rating scale from 1 to 5, where 5 is, is very satisfied, they were 4.5. 4.6 for likelihood to return, and 4.7 for the likelihood of recommending um, a visit to other people. Now, when we look at those motives um, for travel, this group of committed sustainable tourists place much more importance on learning about local than other tourists, those other groups, on learning about local culture and history, spending time in natural environments, um, um, being able to go on tours which are environmentally and socially responsible, um, on accommodation which is environmentally and socially responsible, but also on meeting local people, seeing wildlife, buying local products, and seeing those products being made, and learning about indigenous culture and history. So overall, um, the conclusions from the study indicate that there's generally positive support for sustainability initiatives. Um, there was a relatively small group that were, were negative or for whom it made no difference. Um, However, the degree of influence of sustainability initiatives on decision making um, did vary and on purchase behavior, particularly with those specific product options. Um, so generally there's potential for this destination to leverage off its sustainability initiatives and to develop a core range of sustainable visitor experiences uh, for those committed tourists. Um, and also by doing so, um, there is another group of passive um, tourists who, who would um, find the, des the destination more appealing and would be more likely to visit, but not necessarily specifically pay for those ex more for those experiences. So this research um, did um, also include um, some workshops with key stakeholders to, to um, identify and prioritize those product initiatives in terms of how they would like to move forward. Um, and generally an encouragement for the local operators to continue to focus on sustainability, um, but obviously some further work is needed in, in terms of identifying the ability for um, viable, um, financially viable um, sustainable experiences around those four scenarios to be developed. Um, and in fact, uh, very soon there is going to be a, a two-day workshop on the island run by the local um, city council, which will take this research into account as, re as well as other studies that have been been done about the island to really um, identify a way forward in terms of, of tourism and their priorities. Um, and so I think the lessons from this research show that um, we can't just take for granted that being sustainable is going to make a difference to tourists. Um, and that obviously if you uh, do good things, people will have positive attitudes towards them. Um, but the value in having those scenarios, which were, um, again, generated with the stakeholders and were priced um, by the, the, the ferry company um, to be sellable packages, something that's profitable for them, that they could um, sell on a commission basis, um, rather than people invest in those um, initiatives and people um, not actually be able to purchase them, but still have those experiences, um, showed that um, you know, you really need to put some work and effort into um, identifying products that people are willing to pay for um, and that will bring additional visitation or longer visitation. Um, so we've got some priorities there, some the electric bikes, um, there is some progress being made on that. And there's also continuing discussions about finding the opportunities for more camping on the island. So um, in the long term, some of these things might come to fruition, but in the end, they will only exist if they, they do um, provide a return on investment for the, the industry. Um, so I think that that technique of, of trying to be specific about um, experiences and putting a price on them would make people um, be a bit, bit more realistic about their expectations rather than just um, say, it sounds like a good idea, somebody should do it. Um, 
So I think some lessons to take away from this are looking at those techniques, how do we actually measure market demand? And, and this was a pre-feasibility study, so that was the idea. We found a couple opportunities that have been taken to the next stage. Um, and so those techniques at scenario building is, is a useful approach. Um, so it might be a, a good ex, uh, exercise for in a class to spend some time looking at a particular destination um, and looking at um, opportunities for new product development that focus on sustainability. Um, and that's all I have for you today.